So online payments in Nigeria, you'd quite agree that there has been a significant improvement in the ease of transactions. Now, Paystack. They're a Nigerian fintech with continental ambitions. Why must every good thing be created abroad? abroad you know? The thinking was that before a payment happens, there's a lot that needs to happen. And after that payment, there's a lot that still needs to happen. Ever wondered what it takes to turn a simple idea into a billion dollar company? The story of Paystack is one of vision, persistence, and groundbreaking innovation. In 2015, Shola Akinlade stumbled upon a game changing discovery that revolutionized online payments in Nigeria. But what started as a small experiment quickly snowballed into something far bigger than anyone could have imagined. Join us as we explore the story of Paystack's rise to the top and the relentless drive that fueled one of Africa's most successful fintech ventures. Shola Inlade was born in Lagos, State, Nigeria, and came from a comfortable family. His love for tech started as a child, and so at the age of 16, he got a laptop and started to learn about coding. Not long after, Shola got admitted into Babcock University. There, he met Ezra Olubi and Mayowa, who were likewise studying computer science. He got a job at Heineken after graduation, where he worked as a management trainee. But after two years, he left because he believed he was born to build his own thing. Shola Akinlade co-founded a company called Klein Devor with Mayowa Okegbenle. At Klein Devort, Shola focused on developing software solutions and providing consulting services to various businesses. One of his significant achievements during this time was the creation of Precorio, a collaboration and document workflow tool designed for business environments. Precorio gained traction, with about 200 companies adopting it, and even attracted the attention of banks interested in his expertise. One of his notable projects was developing a payment software for Access Bank called Pay With Capture. This project was pivotal as it eventually inspired the idea for Paystack. Banks, and I just wow. thought about it. I said, you know, like, wow, this I might be like very like this might be an opportunity for me uh, because I've built software before, and now I have some access. You know, so I said, you know, let's let's try it. <laughs> Having um, acquired some experience from building softwares for banks, Shola decided to start some underground work on Paystack. Although Paystack wasn't live then and had only about 300 customers on the waitlist. In 2015, Shola sent an application email to Y Combinator for the first time, and the application was rejected. A few months later, he reapplied and was invited for an interview. It was during this interview that a mentorship bond was formed between the chief executive officer of Y Combinator, Michael Siebel, and Shola. Michael was pleased with Shola's goals, but wasn't comfortable with the fact that it was only Shola who was anchoring the startup. Michael introduced the idea of a co-founder, someone to work with him on the startup, because it was one that requires a strong partner to ensure the goal is achieved. This led to Shola bringing Ezra on board as a co-founder. Ezra Olubi, born on November 12, 1986, in Ibadan, Oyo State, initially dreamed of becoming a pilot but later developed a passion for programming. While attending Babcock University, he participated in the annual computer science exhibitions, where his coding skills earned him the title of Programmer of the Year and a lasting friendship with Shola Akinlaid. In 2007, Ezra created SoftPurse, a product that allowed users to add money to a digital wallet via airtime, attracting around 10,000 customers. In 2010, he built the first version of Ayowo at Softcom. He went on to work at various software companies, including Delivery Science, where he served as Chief Technology Officer in 2014. However, by mid-2015, the company was in financial trouble, and Ezra left due to unpaid salaries. Ezra then joined Shola's company, Klein Devort, where he had been following Shola's progress with Paystack. When Shola offered a partnership, Ezra quickly agreed, moving in with Shola to focus on developing Paystack together. After the interview with Y Combinator, successful applicants are notified of their acceptance into the program. Once accepted, Y Combinators usually hosts three-month mentorship programs where various startup founders get to meet each other 
attend workshops, and refine their pitches. Y Combinator has funded about 3,000 startups, including Reddit, Airbnb, Stripe, and many others. When Shola received the news that they had been accepted, he was elated because Y Combinator was one of the biggest startup accelerators, and it was also an avenue to meet with investors. They became the first Nigerian company to be accepted into Y Combinator, and they also received a funding of $120,000. Shola shared the exciting news with Ezra, knowing that they were about to take on a significant responsibility. Understanding the magnitude of the opportunity ahead, they decided to leave a day before their crucial meeting in the United States to prepare themselves fully. They recognized that the meeting could be the pivotal moment Paystack needed to propel them towards success. In January 2016, Shola and Ezra arrived at San Francisco. They met various startup founders and saw amazing inventions. In Shola's words, we saw a company that makes white shirts never to be dirty. There were also two women who created bras that could cure breast cancers. And when people saw us, they were like, what are you guys building? And we were like, we are building payment. Stripe had already built something of that sort eight years ago, and they felt a little ashamed. But some of the founders found it fascinating, as the company was one of the first Nigerian companies to build something interesting. Later that night, they got about two emails that encouraged them to keep building, which increased their confidence. By the end of 2016, Paystack growth increased. They had about 1,407 live customers who processed about 200,000 transactions, valued at over 1.1 billion Naira. After investors saw the rate at which Paystack was growing and the billions of transactions being processed monthly, they began to believe in Paystack's vision. This made it possible for Paystack to raise additional $1.3 million from investors like Comcast, Tencent, etc. By August 2018, Stripe wanted to purchase Paystack, but Shola and Ezra thought it was too early for Paystack to be sold. As a result, they declined the offer. However, Stripe didn't quit. They invested in the Series A funding that generated about $8 million with investors like Visa, Tencent, and others. Paystack continued to grow and expand its operations. The investments played a pivotal role in helping Paystack enhance its platform, expand its team, and increase its market presence across Africa, like Ghana and South Africa. By 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic, online payments became very prevalent in every part of the world. Stripe saw that as an avenue to expand its footprint in Africa, a region with significant growth potential in digital payments. Paystack's established presence and expertise in the African market made it a strategic fit for Stripe's expansion plans. Stripe came with an offer for Paystack for the second time. They made their intention of wanting to purchase Paystack. Paystack had a vision when they started, which was to solve the payment problems for Nigerians mainly. Along the line, the vision for expansion came into the picture, and here was Stripe, with an opportunity for their product to become global. They saw the benefits the acquisition would bring, so Shola and Ezra agreed to sell Paystack for $200 million. Paystack became the first Nigerian startup to be sold at such an amount. The acquisition was celebrated as a significant milestone for the fintech industry in Africa. Paystack's journey has inspired a new generation of African entrepreneurs, showing that with the right idea and execution, it's possible to build world-class companies from Africa. Even after the acquisition, Paystack has continued to operate independently expanding its services and growing its market presence across Africa. The Paystack story is one that shows the importance of problem solving and attention to customer needs, not just one for fame or the pursuit of wealth. By paying attention to customer needs, one can create an impactful and sustainable business.